What's up boys and girls and welcome back to another Black Desert Online Guide. Today's video is going to be all about world bosses. These are spread across the game and spawn at random intervals throughout the day and night. In total, there are 8 world bosses to fight and each time they die, their respawn timer is reset. So, first of all, how do you know when the bosses are going to spawn? Well, the easiest way to find out which boss is due to spawn is to download a program called Discord and then join the International Hunting Association Discord channel. I'll put a link in the description of this video below, but in short, there is a channel called Boss Timer. If you click onto this, you'll see which bosses are due to spawn or when their spawn windows will open. Once a boss spawns, you can then check live calls to see what percentage the bosses are on and which channels are still alive. It's worth noting that this is community ran, so it's not always 100% accurate, but in my experience, it's a pretty damn reliable source of information most of the time, and it's really helped me out with getting as many boss kills as possible. In this video, I'm going to go over four of the eight bosses that are in this game, and these ones will be Zarka, Kutum, Dimtree Spirit, and Karanda. So we're going to start off with Zarka today, but before we get into that, let's talk about what you need to do before bosses and why you would even bother doing world bosses. So, firstly I'd suggest that you need around 120 AP and 150 DP before you venture to do any bosses. Anything lower than this, then you're probably going to get no loot because you're not going to do any damage, and you're going to get one shot by pretty much every single ability that the boss throws at you. You'll also want to be level 50 plus, as if you're a lower level than this, you'll miss pretty much every attack on the boss and then get no loot anyway. Once you've met the requirements, you should stack up on health and mana pots for the bosses, you're probably going to need them. On top of that, food buffs can be a great aid on these. Serendia Special, Calfian Special, and Knight's Combat Rations are all great choices as they're cheap and effective. A large majority of bosses in this game spawn around the Serendia area, so if you're using a boss ult, then your best bet is to station them at Hydel. From here, you'll be able to get to 6 out of the 8 bosses in the game very easily. Probably the most important thing of all to do with world bosses is to turn off your spell effects. Not only are these distracting at world bosses, but they pretty much melt any CPU or graphics card. You'll drop to around 5 to 10 frames a second, you'll think you're viewing a PowerPoint presentation. Just trust me, turn them off, and you'll have a much better time in the game. On top of that, you might even want to disable uh, other players' pets, as these can really clog up your screen during a world boss, and even during open world PvP. So, turn off the spell effects, turn off pets, and everything will look a lot better for you. So. Why should you even bother doing world bosses? Well, for a start, they can make you some pretty damn good money. If you're just going to turn up to sell the gear that you get, then yeah, you know, if you get yourself a boss drop, you're going to make yourself 90 plus mil uh, for just about 10 minutes work if you're lucky. But the main reason for going bosses is you can obviously get your boss armor and the weapons that you need for end game play. Things like the Zarka weapon, the Dandelion awakening weapon, uh, the offhand boss items and all the armor, you can get those off of all world bosses in the game, except for Muskin Boots and Gaius Helm. These are the only two pieces of boss gear that you have to get off of the awakened summoning scrolls or the normal summoning scrolls. You also generate a lot of hunter seals through doing this and blackstones, which can of course be used for enhancing your gear. You can get rare crystals off the boss, which can be quite hard to start from the marketplace, so some of them you actually need to go to world bosses in order to obtain them. And also, on top of all of that, for those of you that do enjoy PvE content and want a bit of raiding, then I guess in Black Desert, this is as close as you're going to get. Some of these world bosses have some pretty good mechanics, they require you to think on your feet, and they're quite rewarding when you do actually kill the boss and get that loot that you're after. Right, so let's get into the first boss of this video, and that is going to be Zarka. Now, Zarka spawns in Serendia Shrine, which is located in Southern Serendia. To get knowledge on Zarka, you have to speak to the node manager for Serendia Shrine and play one of those fantastic Amity games that we all love so much. It's not overly hard to do, it's just a bit time consuming and boring. Uh, once you've done it, you might need to reset your knowledge, that's fine. You can just go ahead and reset your knowledge in Calfian or with an Elixir of Oblivion and then try again. Uh, I actually gave up in the end at B rank um, and I get plenty of Zarka boxes, so I don't actually believe this affects your chance of getting boss gear that much. <laughs> So Zarka drops the Zarka weapon, which is actually the best main hand weapon in the game, which is why so many people do Zarka every time he spawns. He's a pretty easy boss overall. As you expect, you're going to need to dodge his standard frontal melee attacks and try to stand behind him as much as possible, as this will allow you to avoid being hit, whilst also giving you the extra attack damage you gain from doing back attacks. 
The only ability that you really need to be worried about with Zarka is his fire breath. When you see Zarka gathering dark clouds or smoke around him, you can either run behind him or, for extra safety, you can run behind one of the pillars around the room. Zarka also becomes untargetable during this time, so that's another way to notice to see that he's doing the fire breath if you're having issues noticing the smoke. So, when you can't attack him anymore, just run behind the pillar or run behind the boss and you'll be absolutely fine. Besides that, he's a pretty much tank and spank boss, nice and easy, free loo and off you go. The next boss I'm going to talk about today is Kutum. This is a world boss which is located in the Scarlet Sand Chamber in the Valencia area. In order to obtain knowledge off of Kutum, you will need to do a short quest chain. You obtain the first quest from the node manager of the Sand Chamber. She will ask you to explore the chamber. All you need to do is run through it and find the glowing white items and press R on them. Once you've done this, you'll need to turn in the quest to her and then head over to an NPC which is located near the Sand Grain Bazaar. She will then send you back to the chamber node manager to receive Kutum knowledge. Now, if you're not happy with the rank you've just got on the boss, you can reset it and then do yet another Another fantastic Amity game. But if you like me and you want to kneecap whoever came up with that mini game, then I suggest just sticking with what you get given by the quest. I deleted my logic for this video to test to see how you got knowledge back and I regret my choice massively as I really can't be bothered to do the Amity game. Kutum drops the Kutum Offhand, which is an AP and DP item. It has two gem slots and it also offers 10% ignore resistance. So it's a great pickup for a lot of the classes in the game. Now, in terms of not dying at Kutum, he's a bit more difficult than a lot of the bosses on this game as he is quite hard hitting if you're not well geared. You'll need to watch out for his melee swipe by either standing behind him or dashing through him when he actually does the attack. If you're over 230 DP, then you can pretty much ignore these attacks and then pot up again straight after. Kutum will also randomly burrow underground and start jumping up through the ground in the chamber. When he burrows under, you should just run to the edge of the room and look for the earth shaking beneath you. If it does this, then move out of the way. During this phase, Kutum may also pop his head out of the ground in the middle of the room and do a lightning explosion. If you see him pop up, just stay at max range away from him and block if it's possible for your class to do that. This boss has one main kill ability, and that's his AoE Roar and Dragon. When you see Kutum stop moving and gathering dark clouds by his mouth, you'll want to run as far away from him as possible. If this ability hits you, it will pull you in towards him and will do a lot of damage to you. If you can avoid these abilities, then you're pretty much good to go and you should be able to hop on the Kutum train and get a lot of free loot. Coming up next is my personal favourite and that is the Dim Tree Spirit. This boss is located in the Forest of Seclusion which is just south of the Western Guard Camp in the Balanos region. To get knowledge on the Tree Spirit, you'll need to kill the weekly tree boss scroll which you can get from your Black Spirit and to try and get the last hit on it. It's best to do this boss in a group of friends who can rotate the last hit on the boss so that you can all get knowledge as quickly as possible. This world boss has some pretty great loot. You can get all your normal black stones, weapon boxes, hunter seals and gems, but on top of that, you can get an item called the Tree Spirit Belt, which gives AP and accuracy, or you could even get the Fabled Tree Spirit Armor, which is in my opinion, the rarest boss drop in the game. The armor gives you plus 200 HP, plus 100 mana, and more DP than a standard chest piece. So it's a great addition to your gear set. When you engage Tree, there are a few very important abilities to look out for, and pretty much all of these involve the boss digging his arms into the ground. The first ability is a rock throw. He'll pull out three rocks from the ground and throw them at ranged targets. This does AoE damage, so try to avoid stacking up on other people where possible. Next is his stun ability. He'll dig his arms into the ground again for a short amount of time and then throw out a big AoE stun. The best way to avoid this ability is just to run out to a safe distance if you're worried about getting one shot by it. Another one of his abilities is that he will summon little tree ads to fight for him. Now you don't really need to worry about these too much as they mostly get cleared up by the group AoE and they don't really do all too much damage. The one ability that you really need to worry about is his massive AoE knock up and killing ability that he does. What the tree will do is he'll dig his arms into the ground for an extended amount of time. It will look like he's trying to pull the earth out of the ground. Now, when this happens, you need to run away from him and get a good distance from him, especially if you're a melee class. Because what he'll do is he'll rip his arms out of the ground and that will do massive AoE damage to anyone near him and it will pretty much one-shot most people. 
that's pretty much all there is to the Dim Tree Spirit boss. So the final boss that I'm going to tell you guys about today is a boss called Red Nose. Now, he's located right by Western Guard Camp as well, so very close to where Tree Spirit spawns. And he is a boss which a lot of people actually avoid doing because not only does he drop boss gear that not many people use, but he can also be a bit of a nightmare to kill and a bit glitchy. That being said, I still do him because he's quite a lot of fun with his mechanics, so I will now explain to you how you guys can do him. So, when you engage Red Nose, he has a few core mechanics. One of them has been recently added, which is his charge mechanic. What I'll do is he'll start scuffing the ground near him and then charge towards an enemy. Doesn't do too much damage or anything, but if you see him getting ready to charge, just move out of the way and he'll keep going straight and then stop in the end. Now, his other abilities, on the other hand, you do have to watch out for because they can very easily one-shot you. The first one that I'm going to tell you about is his jump ability. So what Red Nose will do is he'll get down and bend his legs and then start jumping around. He'll jump twice and then out of this he will do a belly flop. Best thing to do is as soon as you see him getting ready to jump is just dash away and get out of range if you're a melee character. If you're a ranged character, just make sure that he isn't jumping towards you. Because if you get hit by the jump and then by the belly flop, you're going to get knocked down and probably killed if you're not heavily geared. The next one that you need to worry about is he does an AoE shout. Now, this is the one which most people get caught out by. What I'll do is he'll start gathering dark smoke around him and he'll do an AoE roar. This hits everyone in front of him. So if you're a melee character, you can get behind him. But be careful how close you are when you're behind him because sometimes if your attacks are going through his body, you'll still get hit by his AoE roar. So for best practice, just run out of range when he does his AoE roar and then go straight back in and start attacking. When he hits around 40-45% HP, he'll do another large AoE roar. And this one is in a full 360 degrees angle around him and will hit anyone that is near him. So when you see him do this, back away, wait for him to do the roar, and then get back into attacking him like normal. Besides that, Red Nose's melee abilities actually do quite a lot of damage compared to other bosses, so you do need to be careful about not getting hit by him. Try and stay behind him like always, and if you can block his attacks, make sure you do that as well. The armor that Red Nose drops is his Red Nose armor piece. Instead of giving plus 200 HP like the Dim Tree Spirit armor does, it actually gives plus 10 HP recovery, and on top of that, it also gives the plus 100 mana. This is why a lot of people don't go for the armor, because they feel like plus 200 HP is a lot better than HP recovery, and I must say that I do also agree with them. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, that's four out of the eight bosses done now. And in the next video, I'll do the other four bosses, which are Nuva, Karanda, Beg, and Mudster. So if you have any questions or anything, if I haven't explained anything that you want to know, please drop a comment in the section below and I will look at them, answer them there. And if I feel like I'm getting asked the same question quite a lot, I will add that into my next boss video. But until next time, guys, take it easy and peace out.